<laughs> okay, anyway, uh, it's normally very seasonal, right? Where we get uh, our vacation time, normally 4th of July and Christmas are the two slowest times of the year. Last year, COVID, everyone was getting really cautious with uh, what, was, what was coming up, where March normally is a very busy month. All hell broke loose, you all know the story, and everything changed, maybe forever where our seasons went from being condensed into a five or six month season, really to being condensed into a quarter. So long story short, the state of the real estate market now versus a year ago is completely different. Everything from prices per square foot, everything from trends, everything from people moving here. And where's the gentleman that asked me about the housing bubble? If he's, if he's, if he's out here, there you are. There isn't a housing bubble, especially in Dallas. And this is spoken from someone who's heavily levered in the real estate industry, especially residential. And I'm actually buying a house with my wife next week. And we're paying full price, right? We're in a different market. So some statistics that I can kind of go over with you all. It's 10% of the homes that have sold in the last quarter sold without the people even seeing them. This is nationwide. Okay, so virtual showings are a real thing. We're realtors back in the day. I was the first realtor in the country to do social media. And I was frowned upon because I was a disruptor, right? Now it's all about convenience. And if you imagine that 10% of, of, of closings in the last quarter have been from buyers that have never even seen the property. And then you're going to put a city like Dallas in the mix where we have 300 people every single month, I'm sorry, every single day moving here. And even if a fraction of those people are C-suite level executives, the Park Cities area, so south of 635, Preston Hollow, Park Cities, et cetera, is probably gonna capture at least 10% of those people, right? You read about bidding wars, you hear about bidding wars on television and in the, in the newspaper. Rarely do you see a bidding war for a property over $5 million, but it's happening. It's happening nonstop and it has not slowed down, okay? And that's because of Californians, that's because of people living here. It's also people that didn't think they ever wanted to move until they were gonna be next to their spouse 24 hours a day during COVID. <laughs> and for real, and that, and that changes the trends. Before last year, and I'm sure Hawkins Wellwood can back this up, everybody wanted open floor plans, right? If I'm in an op open floor plan, or if my wife is with me in an open floor plan, she wants a wall. So it started to become a different kind of trend. So we started, we, start, we started to see these things shift. So average single family home prices are nearly $36,000 than they were last year, just because of lumber, right? It's starting to go down a little bit, which is gonna help us with our trends. But because of that, I, I firmly believe that real estate is not about location anymore. It's about affordability. You've seen people extend their bullseye. And I think that's why I'm able to be on TV is I'm pretty bold with my predictions because they're dead on because they 100% revolve around logic, right? But the problem, or not the problem, but the barrier of entry for places like the Park Cities and right around there is we don't have a lot of room to play with. The one thing in real estate you can't go create is land. So land prices also are at the high, most highest historic prices we've ever seen in the Park Cities alone the, the appraisal price per square foot right now for an oversized lot for a piece of dirt. Y'all take a guess at how much it is per foot. I'm sure Greg knows. Price per foot for dirt, what do you think? $250 a foot. So just like $200, $500, it's like crazy, right? But it makes sense. And normally what I've seen from working with builders is kind of the rule of thumb is if I pay a dollar for a teardown or a building site, I gotta sell it for $3. So simple math, five years ago, what would have sold for 700,000 is now selling for a million, which means the finished product is over a million, is over a million dollars, over $3 million. It's crazy. But guess what's happened as well? A lot of those people from California, they see that on paper and guess what that is to them? It's a steal. And guess how they're paying for these properties? Cash, which means guess what changes? Comps, comparables, values, appraisers, all this kind of stuff has changed and normally it takes 180 days for a, ch for a trend to set and it's happened now for over a year. So we're dealing with this and it's very, very different. Buyers are overreaching to get into the action in places like Park Cities, the beauty of the Park Cities and a fun fact about me personally, my family moved here from South Texas just so we could go to Highland Park High School. My dad commuted to San Antonio five days a week for 15 years on Southwest Airlines, literally he was two years ago, it was a Southwest Airlines, uh, like passenger of the year. It's not an award you want to, literally. But it's, it's so we can go to the Park City schools, right? They're, they're not extending the boundaries. They've created another public, uh, another elementary school just for the demand, but it's not slowing down. Um, there was a misconception, like I said, about the housing bubble, but it's still relatively a seller's market. But the problem right now is a lot of people don't want to sell. You know why? They don't have a place to go, right? Which again, it changes the trends. 
My parents have lived in the same house since 1995, and every day my mom find us a new construction single family home close to Snyder Pluck. It's not going to happen, <laughs> which means they're not moving, right? And if they do move, it's going to be it's going to be taking a new precedent to the price per square foot. And that's the stuff that we were relatively dealing with kind of every single day is the market has literally changed kind of overnight. On top of all of this, I, I know that Greg and I were talking about this earlier, but we have 12,000 more realtors than we did a decade ago, just in our association in DFW alone. But we have over 70,000 in DFW. That's not commercial real estate agents, which we also do. That's not apartment locators. That's residential realtors, which another trend, I know it's disgusting, right? Just everyone quit. <laughs> but another trend that changed is everybody gets into real estate pre-COVID because they watch TV, they have social media, or they just want to go make a quick million bucks, right? Which a fun statistic pre-COVID is, y'all know how many realtors, the, the statistic for realtors that make it more than three months into the business, how many make it? 20%. Wow. Because they have the luxury of quitting and going back to what they were doing before, which normally was being a flight attendant, being a bartender, I'm serious, being a server at a restaurant, right? And guess what happened last year in COVID? Bartenders, servers, flight attendants, people that worked on cruise ships, guess what they couldn't get? A job. So guess what they did? Real estate. So not only are we saturated with buyers, we're saturated with realtors. And guess where every realtor wants to sell real estate? Park cities, right? So just prepare, you're gonna get a lot more door knocks. It's not from people selling magazine subscriptions, it's from realtors that hopefully work for my company. So, <laughs> um, in June, about 8,600 single family homes were listed for sale with real estate and 50% of that, wait, hold on, I don't understand that statistic, okay. Median single family home prices in May alone were 26% higher than they were last year, right? That's not new construction. And again, that's a new trend and everyone's like, keeps waiting for the prices to go down. What are you waiting for? Because at the same time, you know what else is soaring through the roof? Rental prices, it's crazy. Read the Dallas Morning News. The new trend right now are master plan <coughs> rental communities, single family detached properties, which means people in their head are gonna probably get to the point where they're gonna say to themselves, guess what? I probably can't ever afford a home. So let's go lease, which means American dream might not be home ownership anymore. I know, even though we're in the business of making that a reality, okay? It's changing, it's crazy. Um, on average, in May of this year in North Texas, guess how long, even though the, the slide, oh, look, we were at the Q&A slide, okay, good. <laughs> I'll just tell you real quick, it took 24 days on average to sell a home in the month of May, okay? That's pretty quick, and that's across DFW in general. The Dallas region is one of the fastest growing metropolitan areas in the entire country, adding more than 100,000 people per year. Pre-COVID, 300 times 365 is a lot more than that. We're also the number one commercial real estate market it's projected to be for the next decade, which means we are the unicorn. There's no housing bubble. When people move people here to work, that's what they need, a place to live. Guess where they want to be? Probably the park cities, okay? It ain't slowing down. Um, it's estimated to be 62% cheaper to live in Dallas than San Francisco. And one of the interesting facts that I used to obsess over back in the day, have y'all seen the movie, The Big Short? Right? Uh, that movie changed my life. That movie and Moneyball changed my entire life. But back in the day, what was interesting about the real estate crash in the early 2010s is we were never in the same indexes as San Francisco, as Vegas, as Phoenix, as Miami, as Atlanta, these cities that are kind of like this. We were in the same indexes as Pittsburgh, Oklahoma City, Cincinnati, Louisville, blue collar cities, right? Which means to me that screams stability. And all of a sudden, if you guys have lived in Dallas longer than 10 years, it's a different city than it was. We have districts, we have culture, we have stuff to do, we're pre all of that stuff. What you did in Dallas was you ate, you drank, and you watched high school football. But it's different, right? It's an easier sale. When we moved here in 95, I came from San Antonio and I was so excited because Dallas had a sports team, right? But seriously, San Antonio had the Spurs, which didn't count, but we had all the big four sports teams. <laughs> But now there's actually stuff to do here, right? When you have somebody come visit, you actually have stuff to do, which means people are gonna get out of the woodwork and move here. The only two things we don't have and never will have are mountains and oceans. 
which means it's hot, so if you have somebody come visit, don't have them come right now. <laughs> right? It's like when you bring somebody to church for the first time, you're like, no, it's a sermon about giving, right? And it's, it... <laughs> so uh, just as far as some uh, bold predictions that we've got coming up, uh, another fun fact, three of the fastest growing communities in the entire country are in DFW, right? They're in Salina, right? They're in places like that. And three years ago, the fastest growing community in the entire country was a city called St. Paul, Texas. Raise your hand if you've heard of that. Not many people, right? When I was in college, I used to get hazed at a ranch that ended at the tollway. The ranch was in Frisco, right? And I still have nightmares about it, but I remember it. <laughs> now the tollway goes way further. In the next 10 years, they're expecting DFW to technically extend all the way to the Oklahoma border, which means simple logic points south. What's the same distance south? Waco, right? Nobody talks about building south. The same distance east, you know what that is? Terrell. Tyler. St. Paul is, is the bordering city to Terrell, Texas, which is built out. It's crazy. Go east, right? Go west. Y'all been to Mansfield lately? Go to Mansfield, it's fun. Why would you have gone to Mansfield before all this stuff, right? You run out of room, you build somewhere else. That's what's happening in Dallas, Texas, but the park cities will always be an anomaly. Always, Preston Hollow will always be an anomaly, but it's just different over here. So my predictions are gonna be, we're gonna be living, this is the future. This is the future of Dallas real estate. Our new numbers are set. One of the greatest parallels I heard was in Los Angeles, post World War II, everything changed. You know why? Everybody moved there, everybody. Now they're coming here. Why? It's affordable. It's central, we have kind of good schools, right? Our streets suck, but the people are great. In Dallas, you can no longer go see somebody in, a, in another city and be like, I bet you they're from Dallas. Where back in the day you could, especially if they went to Highland Park, right? Back in the day you could. But Dallas is kind of becoming a melting pot. We have something that no other cities in the entire country have, and that's the ability to expand. And when people notice that stuff, they fall in love with our city. And again, like we have no beaches, we have no mountains. It sucks here from right now until about mid-September, but we have air conditioning. And that's our cell. That's our cell. And realize that every single time a Fortune 50 or a Fortune 200 company goes and relocates their company here, there's 10 to 20 companies, which each one of those that have to go have their livelihood happen because of those companies, which means we have job security. Right, from a realtor's perspective, there are cities that I never heard of until I had to go and get my real estate license, right? And you learned that in five years ago, Fairview, what is Fair, right? Fairview is a metropolis, right? 10 years ago, McKinney, I don't know about that. 15 years ago, Frisco, right? It's happening right in front of our eyes. And if y'all wanna go and have a fun afternoon, literally just drive north. Go to the Star in Frisco, right? Go to South Lake Town Square. The Caro 10 years ago was on an island. Now it's all built out in Westlake, right? The thing that they have that we don't in the city of Dallas, they have great, public schools. Every four months right now in the city of Frisco alone, which is less than 70% built out, they're opening the high school. Every four months in Frisco, it's crazy. So that's our new city. And obviously I think we're already a top five Metroplex, but what's gonna happen here is something really different. It's like a real life video game. I played a game called Sim City as a kid. If you remember this game, you literally go build a city. It's happening here. And everyone talks about Austin, but Austin doesn't have the ability to expand east and west, and we do. If you've ever driven to Austin on a four o'clock on a Friday afternoon, you know that, oh, right when you pass Mopac, you're like, just turn me around. And that's why people go to Waco, right? It's like when you go to eat at Toulouse or whatever the restaurant is, and it's, or Taverna, you're like, it's crowded, I'll go to Toulouse, right? It's like, turn around. I don't need to go to Austin, I'll go right back to Waco. We can do that here. We have the ability to expand. It's a safe, real estate market on top of all that right now we have the most historically low interest rates ever ever when I got into real estate interest rates were like five or six percent I know some of y'all were in it for me where it might have been 10 or 12 percent of people were still buying homes logic is always going to trump everything else and when people put pen to paper right now they're going to find a way to make it work um, I'm here to answer questions as well. That's my new headshot with my mullet. The other one was, was, was pre-pandemic, but I, I love real estate. I love the city of Dallas and um, the park cities mean something a little bit different to me, but I think I'd take a little bit more um, realistic approach to this, which has played to our favor uh, since day one. One o'clock on the dot, boom. <laughs>
hearing about um, local residents being priced out of the market by hedge fund buyers. So are you seeing that, and what percent of the time does that happen? Yes and no, right? And, and again, it has, usually you don't have one month of inventory for houses over five or six million dollars in the park cities. Normally there are five to ten, you know, per year that might trade. Right now we're seeing one every three weeks over seven million dollars, which is nuts. Those people for the most part are probably out of town people, right? And there's no deal to be had too, which is hard. And, it, and again, if you put on paper, here's 10,000 square feet for $10 million, that's a steal. And in the back you have a yard. For a New York person, that's, I'll take two, right? So, so it, it, it is a reality, uh, but there's still people trying to get in here that, you know, normally the progression from people I went to high school with, graduate, you live in uptown, you have an apartment, you have your first house in the M streets. If you can afford it, you do Devonshire. If you can't afford Devonshire, you do Briarwood. And then give me to the Park Cities, right off the tollway. Give me to the Park Cities, right off 75, and then get me to the to the bullseye. But that's changed a little bit. But yeah, there are people that are moving in here in droves. And when you move five to 10 people here that their average take home per year is over $10 million, it's a drop in the bucket. So it's changed. Where normally the rule with real estate is the bigger the property, the lower the price per square foot, but when you see houses at 10,000 square feet selling for $1,100 per foot, that changes a whole other part of the market. So short answer is you're right. Yeah. Final question. Final question. What was it about, thanks for coming. Yeah, you're welcome. What was it about Moneyball that changed your life? <laughs> yeah, good question. All right, this is a whole nother speech that we'll do maybe when the bar is open, but I, I, I grew up, uh, no one believed in me other than my parents growing up. I took the real estate exam more than anyone in the history of Texas. I took it 22 times, I'm not joking. I'm not joking, and I was never recruited. And most real estate people, you pass your test and you get calls from everybody on planet Earth. Uh, there's over 115,000 brokerages in DFW. No one called me, I'm like, all right, this reminds me of college, and high school, and elementary school, middle school. And then I saw Moneyball. And it's essentially about believing and investing in the people that aren't the first round draft picks. And I saw that, I was like, this is how I'm gonna run my company. Where it's people, like, I literally didn't get an interview at any other company other than the one that initially hired me when I found out they hired me because I had a pulse. And so, uh, it just changed my perspective. And I also think Brad Pitt is really hot. So, uh, yeah, good question. Okay, thank y'all for letting me come. This is really cool. I appreciate it.